Hello there, welcome to Saber Jewel Gaming, where we always take the high ground, and welcome to another one of our wonderful retro reviews, and yet again, we are delving back into Star Wars games, because we know I love these Star Wars games, I know you love Star Wars games. So today we're having a look at 2002's Star Wars Jedi Starfighter. Whereas the original Star Wars Starfighter focused on the Battle of Naboo and the bright yellow Naboo Starfighter that some loved and some hated from The Phantom Menace, this time around the main ship of focus was the Jedi Starfighter as seen in Attack of the Clones. And this came with some very exciting perks, but also with some problems. You see, at this point in time in the early 2000s, the gold standard for Star Wars Starfighter games was the amazing Rogue Squadron series featured on the Nintendo consoles, and there was a few others out there for different consoles that were really good as well, but they had a history, they had a legacy, they had the entire original trilogy to call on, which meant as well as ships like the X-Wing, the A-Wing, the TIE Fighter, there was also the Y-Wing, the Millennium Falcon, the B-Wing, a whole host of ships that people cared about, which meant there was variety that people actually were invested in. That wasn't the case for these games, and by the time Jedi Starfighter came out, the focus was on that one ship. Hell, the game was named after it, and that one ship was only ever seen in one movie. So, that came as a little bit of a handicap for the franchise and the game itself. But, that said, how did the actual game play out? Well, if there was one thing this game did well, it was marketing. This game came out the exact same month, but a few weeks before Attack of the Clones was released. So people were excited to get to see and play in this new ship that they probably suspected was going to be a mainstay for the Jedi going forward. That meant that people rushed out and this game was actually very popular. But it wasn't just that, the gameplay itself was actually pretty good. The game designers made the wise move to keep the control simple and similar to games like Rogue Squadron, so if you hadn't played it before, it wasn't going to be too tricky to get used to. If you had played the Rogue Squadron games and others like it, this would be pretty intuitive, you'd know what you were going to be doing. However, it didn't really add anything particularly original or creative. Some people would point out those force powers that we mentioned that the Jedi Starfighter could use, but realistically these didn't amount to much more than a lightning strike or being able to use a force shield. And with regards to Star Wars canon, those force powers were pretty dubious anyway, so we're not going to touch on those too much. The story itself was relatively engaging, not exactly super enthralling, but what did help was that the cutscenes in between the starfighting levels were genuinely really good. The graphics were incredible for the time, and they actually felt like you were in that universe. The problem was, once you got back in the cockpit, unless you were in that Jedi starfighter, you were controlling a ship that you probably didn't care too much about. But other than that, I think most people genuinely enjoyed the game. The game sold really well, although this is no surprise given when it was due to come out when everyone was especially hungry for Star Wars. However, what really reflected well was the scores it tended to get. In most magazines at the time, it was ranking between 8.5 and 9 out of 10. So, there's very little can be said to criticise that. But, how does this game hold up under modern scrutiny? Well, normally this one's quite easy. I might point out that a game either holds up fantastically well, or it's just a bit rubbish, but with this game, the answer's a little bit more complicated than that. So first of all, much of the graphics, especially the cutscenes, still pretty good, no problem there. The problem tends to be during the space combat, the controls are fine, and the story's fine. It just feels a little bit hollow, empty, almost as if you're watching it but not feeling it. The universe doesn't seem to have a great deal of depth to it, almost as if it was rushed out, so it's all quite superficial. But the same could be said about a lot of games for this time, so is that really the problem? A lot of other games still draw me back in, so why doesn't this? And I think that's where its other handicap comes, one which isn't actually the game's fault, and that's that Star Wars moved on. You see, after this film was made, none of the characters or ships used in it were ever referenced again. By the time Episode 3 came out, Jedi Starfighters looked completely different. There was nothing about this that lived on in Star Wars lore, and so there was nothing really to draw me back in. Jedi Starfighter? I'd say it probably gets a 6.5 out of 10. There's nothing really wrong with the game, 
but there's nothing particularly to drag me back into it. Big thanks for watching, please consider subscribing and dropping a comment or a like, and you can follow me over on TikTok and Instagram as well.